Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 218 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara. What's up? Not much. What's happening with you? What's going on? Oh, Friday before Memorial Day. Yeah. Can't wait. Super (laughs) busy. Doing lots of things at work. Leaving here at 2. Got a baseball tournament all weekend. And then uh, roll into Monday, which is a holiday. Are you playing baseball or is this a kid baseball? No, it's my son. Travel ball. So you just sit there in this blazing sun and watch? Pretty much. And it's about 93 in Florida, so it should be lovely. (laughs) Are you one of those parents that get angry and scream and yell at the coach? Well, no, but I'm one of those parents that screams and is super hyped about it. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) It's my thing, you know? I can only imagine how competitive you are with your kids. Competition. (laughs) who I am. It's in my blood. Yeah. So, hey, last weekend I was at Lab Day West. I was going to ask you about it. It was amazing. It was an awesome, awesome show. Good. A lot of people came way up from last year, obviously, but it was just a good time. I had a, my presentation went over well, had 87 people signed up and probably 40 showed up. I don't know where these people go. Good for you. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Had a great time. We got to get you out there sometime. I'm willing and able, but <laughs> not the time, but maybe next year. Maybe next year. So what's up? You're not going to the FDLA this next weekend? I am going to be there. Damn, you're a traveling man. Tell me about it. I'm all over the place. Jeez. Wow. Like you mentioned, this weekend, the FDLA Southern State Symposium and Expo meeting is in your hometown in Orlando. That's right. Now, unfortunately, the podcast, we're not going to be recording, but we'll both be there. High five. High five. (laughs) I, of course, will be at the pre-booth, but you, Barb, you're going to be on stage Friday at 10 a.m. Yes, I am. Super psyched. Are you super psyched? I am super psyched. Yes, you know it. Yeah, so this is a panel discussion, right? You're not just up on stage doing it solo. Nope. What's it called? Marketing and communication between the laboratory and clinical office. Tips that work. Yep. And I am prepared. You know how I roll. So I've been up at, you know, 530s, just going over the questions and talking to a few people and getting some different perspectives on some of the questions. And I'm excited. Yeah. So how do you communicate to clinical offices? Give us the tip right now. What is the number one tip you have? It's the top three, yeah. and I'm not telling you. There you go. Everyone has to show up. <laughs> you want to get the tips, you got to yeah, come. Yeah, well, there's three of us, so I'm sure there's going to be a fair amount of tips, but I think we do things differently after the pandemic and more of the same thing, so it's I'm, I'm excited. I also noticed that the panel is kind of a boys club. You are the only female up there. Most of the time. You know how I love that. Yeah, so we got Bennett. The great Bennett moderating the whole thing. Yeah. So we're instantly know it's going to be good. Yep. But then who are you with? You got Rick. Rick Sontag. Rick Sontag. Yep. He's local. He's based in um, St. Pete. And then Bob Woosley, who I'm not too familiar with, but we've had a couple calls and he's a pretty cool guy. I think he's NDX, isn't he? I believe so, because when we were talking about it, yeah, that kind of, I didn't know NDX, but I did know he was from a, a larger company for yeah. sure. Just the way he talks. This is going to be exciting. So my question is, since I'm going to be there front row with eggs and vegetables to throw, <laughs> are they taking questions from the audience? Yes. Oh, this is going to be sweet. Yes. 20 minutes. <laughs> awesome. I am coming up with my list of top three questions. <laughs> I'm going to ask just to throw everybody off. All right. Look forward to it. <laughs> so if anyone that's listening is going to be at the FDLA meeting this weekend, not only does it look like an amazing show. Always. Yeah. But make sure you come and find Barb and I. We'd love to meet you. Sorry the podcast is not going to be there, but we'd still like to say hi. So there are names in this industry that I hear about, but sometimes we never have the pleasure of crossing paths. There's also names of people that get mentioned by many on this podcast. And again, sometimes our paths don't cross. But last weekend, I finally and briefly got to meet Min Tran in person at Lab Day West. Nice. But before that, we did talk an hour where Barb and I 
learned all about the man behind dental tech tips. Min is a second generation dental technician. Taking after his father, Min got into the lab and by his own admittance was not very good at it. But with an interest in shooting videos and a love for creating content, Min has found a place as the technician that reviews products. Nice. Over the years, Min has gotten much better in the lab. And being at the second lab in Canada to get 3Shape, he got really good at CAD, and many others go to him to get the help they need. It's a great story from a fellow content creator, so join us as we chat with Min Tran. Whipmix VeraWorld Resin Cleaning Station is the ideal piece of equipment to use in the 3D printed resin post process. Its oscillating, multi-speed stirrer produces a tornado-like vortex every 30 seconds and guarantees efficient, effective, and powerful cleaning whether units are individual or still attached to the build plate. They have two alcohol baths, which make an effective step wash system. It cleans more efficiently and there is less alcohol needed since the alcohol is reusable for both a fresh bath and a dirty bath, super plus. The Very World's intelligent design offers features such as mode, time, and start stop button display, which gives the operator full and automatic control of the cleaning process. A mesh basket used in the wash container makes it super easy to keep track of small printed parts when cleaning. The affordable unit's one year warranty ensures that you will have peace of mind as the owner. So visit whipmix.com or call 800 626 56 Five one for more information about this super popular product. And we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the bench. The interview. We are excited to welcome to the podcast probably someone that does more content for this industry than we do. Min Tran, how are you, sir? I'm good, Elvis. Thank you so much for the invitation. And uh, I'm not sure about that. You guys have been at it very consistently for, for quite a while. So Yeah, so, what does that mean, you. Elvis? Well, <laughs> there's a handful of people we see in our industry that's constant posters to social media and creating content that's geared pretty much only for our industry. And men, you're one of them. It seems like every time I'm on social media, there's some sort of video, meme, joke, Oh, he's competing, huh? Well, I don't, I'm not going to say competing. <laughs> well, let's just check with Min. Do you have a podcast? You know what? I kind of attempted to start one and I had like one episode and I, I didn't pursue it after that because I realized how difficult it is to get people and, you know, follow up with all that stuff. So kudos <laughs> to you guys for doing over 200 episodes. Thank you. Well, since yeah. you don't have a podcast, we'll continue with this interview. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you passed. <laughs> yes. So, Min, let's hear the story. As far as I know, all you do is content for the industry, but obviously you got to have a history with it. So how'd you get started? So, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that, actually. So I am a lab technician. I've been in the industry since 2006. Much like Barbara, I'm a second generation dental technician. My dad was a dental technician for 35 years before he retired at the bench doing metal and actually I got into the industry as a a summer job right after high school so that was 2006 I was 17 years old did you have a choice oh yeah I did well you know what (laughs) I didn't know what I was gonna do so we'll, we'll back up a little bit more here like I before that like in high school I was really interested in you know computers and and CAD design I was thinking maybe I'd go to like san francisco or something be a starving artist and make pixar movies so i always loved working on computers and animation and 3d design and things like that but i didn't really have any plans so my dad said hey you know what you're not doing anything for the summer you want to come into the lab sit with me see what i do see if you like it and do something for the summer so i I went in there and i sat with him watched him holding his little wax knife over the buffalo oh yeah flame open (laughs) flame thing there and grabbing little pieces of blue yeti wax and putting it on this dye and i was like I didn't, I had no idea, you know, like his whole life, I knew that he worked in a dental lab, but I had no idea what, what that was until I got there. So then of course, summertime, people were taking vacation. So the owners of the lab said, Hey, do you want to fill in, in the model room? So of course I help out for a couple of weeks in the model room. And then two weeks later, it just so happened that one of the other metal workers 
found a job somewhere else. So they said, hey, you know, if you're not doing anything in in the meantime, while you're figuring what you do, would you like to cover his spot? Metal finishing. Not, well, yeah. So waxing up copings, you know, dipping, casting, doing all that. So it was nice, actually. I had my own little bench there. I set it up the way that I like. I had all my tools and everything. And it was, it was really fun. You had your headphones in. You go over, invest everything, yeah. cast. And I got pretty good at it, right? And actually, a, a funny story. I was I was terrible my first day. <laughs> oh, so, and I, I was so lucky because I, I got so arrogant with it. I was like, oh, yeah, I got this. And I go and I show my dad and he's like, all oh, your margins are short. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, it was like seven o'clock at night and I was just completely defeated. And he goes, you know what? Just go home. <laughs> and then the next day, it was like my first day when I, I really did it. And I came in the next day. And of course, the, the owner of the lab there is checking all the cases and he gets to my cases. And I'm like, you get that sinking feeling in your stomach. Like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And of course, my dad stayed extra late to finish my work for me. So he, fix he really rescued me. <laughs> Uh-huh. that was like you know kind of the thing that that saved me so you know i did that for a couple months and again still didn't really know what i was doing but the owners of the lab at that time had just purchased a cad system they're like you're good with computers right and i'm like yeah i, I guess they're like well you know what we just bought this cad system and you're gonna run it wow <laughs> so they gave me this thick manual from Velen, which is the, the German company. It was like this binder, and the, they're like, well, it's going to be delivered in a couple of weeks. Here's this binder. Read it, and then when it comes in, we'll do the training, and we'll, we'll start making copings with zirconia. So we had like a Procera Mod 40 yeah. scanner that I maybe used three times to make implant abutments. And so I did that that rotation thing with that little touch probe, and it, it rotated around, and you got back this zirconia abutment. So that was my experience with Dental Cat up to that point. Other than that, it was just waxing up copings and, and bridges and, mm-hmm. and casting and maybe the odd pressing here and there. But it was November 2006, and we got this CAD system, and I read the binder, and I kind of knew what we were doing. But yeah, exactly like that. It came in, they set it up, and I just started slinging zirconia copings and free unit bridges on that for for years and years and years so did you take the manual home and read it front to back so that when a system came in you were already good to go yeah yeah basically that it was funny actually because the the trainer from uh from Velen was like wow you you seem to really already know what you do and i was like yeah i i read the manual <laughs> which <laughs> a lot of it's people don't like say that's a, that's a rare trait for technicians that's a rarity yeah, yeah. yeah. what system was it it was the, the Wieland Xenotech systems. Oh, yeah. Funny enough, at the time, we were the second lab in all of Canada that got three-shape, right? So three-shape dental system was released in 2005. That was like version 1.02. Mm-hmm. We got version 1.7, which was like the 2006 update. And then they very shortly updated to version 2 in like 2007. So it, we were one of the very, very first like early adopters. So back then you were using it. Uh, you only had like RFID discs that would only work with that system because it was all closed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was the system that we were using. So what was VLAN? Was that a three-shape? Oh, okay. So I'll give you a little bit of background there. So VLAN is a German dental alloy company. From my understanding, they do other things as well. Yeah. They partnered with IMS, so IMS i so they made the Veland IMS system, which came with CAD, which was the uh, three shape. They branded it as the Xenotech CAD. It, you didn't even hear three shape; you just heard Veland. Yeah, okay. Reputation in Germany. Um, they bundled it with Izicam, which was like a, another German uh, company, uh, Izel or something like that, that did you know machining for industry. And then of course they built the, they took the IMS I core machines. They had the forty eight twenty, which was the big one, and then the forty thirty M one, which was the one that we had, which is like the smaller one. Uh, absolute workhorse of a machine. It's been working at the lab um, for 16 years now. It's still running to this day. Wow. So after, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a, just an absolute uh, great piece of machinery. A 16 year old mill that's still working. 16 year old mill. Yes, of course. Yeah. So it's it's. What was it's it like? Incredible. One axis or something? Or uh, you know what? It started with three axes, <laughs> and then they had a software update that allowed it to do three plus two. I think that was like 2009 ish when we got that huh. update so yeah so that that was kind of how we got our our start with with cad there so for for years and years i was just slinging copings and people would build up their porcelain on top of it until about 2009 when very famously glidewell introduced the bruxer mm-hmm. so we became one of the first labs to to get certified in in that in canada and we brought that here to the market and y- you know how it is now everything is a full contour crown so were you doing the designs at the time also? Yeah, yeah. So I did designs. And it's funny because 
I had no idea what I was doing probably for a good solid five years. Five yeah. years. <laughs> five years. And I was, for, I don't know if it was like the fact that it was family or they were just super patient with me, but they just let me keep doing slinging garbage really, oh, <laughs> and geez. chicken scratch. I remember one day it was like five years in and I finally understood that there was, that teeth had an extra depth to them. There was dimension to it, right? And, and then I, I waxed up one out of fun. They're like, wow, you know, you, you finally understood that there, you know, there's, there's three dimensions on, on these crowns. Very fortunate that, that everyone, everyone was very patient with me in the beginning. But at, at that point, that's when I really kind of started taking dental lab work much Passion. more seriously. Exactly. Yeah. That, you, you really really have to kind of get good at something to, to appreciate it, right? So and I to finally... understand it, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So full contour. So you taught yourself how to do full contour, huh? That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I didn't teach myself. That We obviously had, like, Ceramus and, and my dad and, and everybody else in the lab who showed me what I needed to do. But eventually, you know what? I, I think it comes down to you see enough neighboring teeth on models mm. that, that you start to see what they look like and what they should look like right yeah. so that that takes time just just through osmosis i guess five years apparently <laughs> yeah apparently <laughs> for me some people i, I see like the, the they just do it in a year and they're they're absolute artists right but but you know we all learn at our own pace i guess yeah how big was this lab actually uh now it's about 15 people back then it was i'd say around 10 ish okay so like we've always been been relatively small but uh and, and a little bit more mid-market i wouldn't say boutique or anything like that mm-hmm. but you know like we, we we try to cater to our customers our needs and that's still a decent sized lab though yeah yeah for sure are you guys full service in canada we are yeah we primarily focus on crown and bridge implant all the fixed stuff but we do have a, a pretty a pretty busy removal department as well i don't do any ortho uh if if they request it we'll, we'll contract it out to other labs that, that are good at it but you know that that's just the service we, we offer to our clients nice you're speaking as you're still at this lab i am wow i am wow so yeah this is basically funny enough the only job i've had but i've done every so very much like you elvis i i started right from the bottom and and kind of worked my way up so like i said after about that five years that's when i really started thinking you know what i'm going to take this seriously as a career Mm -hmm. so I, i approached the owner and i was like hey you know what can i can i start doing more can i can i start doing you know some account management can i go out there you know, try and drum up some more business. So I went out and I actually found us some more dentists. I, I started trying to get more on the education side. I really decided that, you know what, I'm going to pursue this as a career. So I, I went and pursued the uh, the actual exams. So up in Canada, we have our RDT exams, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. very similar to the CTT, but you have to do kind of all five disciplines. Right. Uh, one of the, the best things I ever did for my career was, was that because it really taught me how to approach dental lab work from a, a comprehensive perspective, right? Learning how to set denture teeth, learning how, how you know, uh, all, all the different concepts and all the different disciplines. So I, I challenged my exams. Luckily, I passed. Uh, there was a couple hoops to jump through. Everybody has their own journey. It's one of my achievements that I'm very proud of. So, of course, I've really done every job in the lab, and I've been very fortunate enough to be able to do that. And they've been very, like I said, very patient with me. I'm not very good when I start something, but I, I kind of, you know, just, just keep at it until I kind of get good at it. And yeah, that's kind of the why I'm, I've, I've always been here. So, yeah. How did you teach yourself the other aspects for the RDT? Did you just work with other people in the lab? So actually, the the Air Force manual is like where you kind of learn the, the big chunk of it, right? Sure. And then YouTube channels. So again, like like uh, you were saying, a lot of video content out there. You go on YouTube, you watch. There's there's this whole like microcosm of dental lab education mm. where people are setting denture teeth or they teach you how to wax things up or um guys that teach you how to bend wires you know uh cade uh from, from oh yeah down yeah. there yeah we know steve zara he's oh, yeah. he, like th- those two guys taught me everything i know about ortho and they're they're kind of the main reason why i, I passed any of my ortho stuff <laughs> um, i had a friend who's a denturist in town he he taught me how to set teeth really so he, i went there he, he showed me all the ins and outs of that i was mistakenly thinking i could get away with doing it with an electric wax he's like nope you need a, an open flame you need to do it you know with with you know gas and, and heat and all this stuff the, the the wax electric just just doesn't work so a lot of people have helped me along the way obviously the ceramics we have some very talented ceramics here my dad taught me the metal work so you know, self-taught like with studying but a lot of a lot of mentors a lot of tutors and, and yeah does the rdt have both written tests and then like hands-on 
Yeah. So funny enough, because in Canada and specifically in the jurisdiction that I live in, Ontario, uh -huh. you cannot challenge your RDT if you don't have a four year diploma. And of course, I was I learned on the job, so sure. I, I wasn't able to challenge it. So it was like kind of a hurdle that I never thought I'd be able to get over. But with enough research, I kind of realized that we have this labor mobility thing in Canada where they sign this thing where you're able to go to other jurisdictions. So what I did was actually challenge the prior learning equivalency exam in British Columbia on the West Coast. So I did that. And what they allow is they allow you to take five years of lab experience and challenge your equivalency exam. So I did my equivalency exam first, and then I challenged my written and practical exams in British Columbia. Then we were able to take that and then transfer to Ontario. Wow. Wow. That yeah, so some... a couple of hoops I had to yeah, jump no through. Kidding. I, yeah, it's, it's been a journey, something that's taken a long time, but I'm, I'm very proud of, of that, that achievement. Yeah, you should be. That's huge. So after getting your RDT, are you managing the lab now? So, so it, it's it's funny because like none of these things really happen in like a, a, a linear fashion, and they're not like all in the in their own lanes. You know, what I mean, everything kind of happens concurrently. Yeah. So I think around 2012 was when I kind of really approached the owner and said, "Hey, you know what? I'd like to start doing more account management, start doing more sales, start bringing in more business." Because I really did get kind of good at CAD that I had a big chunk of my day that, that wasn't being spent productively, right? So I said I could fill it with something else. So funny enough, I, you're on the road, Elvis, you know how it is. You're on the road, you're driving. and yep. you start. I actually started listening to audiobooks and, and podcasts and uh, a lot of sales audiobooks. So like uh, Brian Tracy, some of Jim Rohn, some mm -hmm. of these, these like real sales gurus of, of the back back in the day and i kind of picked up a lot of tricks for selling and all those those tactics right so that that was kind of another form of self-education of, of teaching me how to really not just be a lab technician but but you know really focus on client relationships how did you know you wanted to do sales how did you know you wanted to go out it, it, it's it's funny i i didn't it was just like i you were bored <laughs> <laughs> I, I got bored basically yeah i like projects i like little projects i like pursuing different things keep keeping things interesting i can never just do one thing so it was funny enough i was scrolling through some website and i ran across this guy he's uh, his name is ramit sati and it was uh i'll teach you how to be rich or something like that and i, I just read some of his posts and, and something just kind of clicked that hey you know what there, there's this whole other aspect of business because before that i was just you know a bench monkey really you just show up trim dies do all the stuff punch the clock go home yeah, uh, but th there was that lack of fulfillment almost. Mm -hmm. So I, it, it just reading all these posts and, hear, and hearing all these self help things, it, it just it just kind of clicked in my head that I was like, hey, you know what? There is some fulfillment that I could get out of this job because I, I really did enjoy the the CAD aspect. I really did enjoy the job because you know I did get good with it uh, eventually with, with some patience from everybody else. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you just you just gained an appreciation for everything else that comes along with the business, right? So what do you think? You got out there, started doing yeah, sales. Yeah, you just start knocking on doors. <laughs> I just started knocking on doors. I showed up at dentist offices, and I didn't know what I was saying. I didn't know what I was doing. I just said, "Hey, you know what? We're a dental lab in town. Would you would you like to send us some work? It worked sometimes. Sometimes people felt sorry for me. Sometimes people got <laughs> <laughs> they got really angry at me for showing up without an appointment. Uh, but but you know what? It <laughs> it was really humbling, right? And this was right around. 2008 so that was like the financial crisis mm. well 2012 was like financial crisis people were still you know recovering oh, yeah. right so so like it, it was a weird time because like the lab wasn't very very busy so it, it was a great way to kind of drum up business and, and kind of build the business that way and really make a name for myself and in the local area and build some relationships with, with clients who have become very good friends over the years it taught me just just a whole different side of the lab industry and yeah, so the, as things progressed, I guess I'll, I'll fast forward a little bit there. There was that period of, of where I did sales and kind of really focus on that. But but we went through another phase. And like I said, like these things don't happen in a linear fashion where sure. like one thing kind of stops and the next thing kind of starts. But I also have always had a passion for, like you said, like I said earlier, video animation, making Pixar movies, things like that. So, of course, you know, you spend a lot of your time on the computer. You spend a lot of time in the lab. I decided that I always wanted to get a video camera or well, a DSLR camera that could take video. So I purchased my first big camera and I was going to be this professional and take all these great things. And the only thing you have to take videos and pictures of are 
dental lab things. So, so, <laughs> so that's what I did, right? So I had to, you're in the lab and I start making little review videos of different products we had in the lab. So it was like an Emacs CAD block. They made the MT one. So we, I made a review video of that. Whatever we had in the lab, I just it was like the the trend at the time, right? It was like everyone was was starting their own YouTube channel. So and th- there was really nobody doing that in the lab space. And I still don't think there's really many people doing that to this day. What kind of video though? Take me through it. Like you said, the Emacs CAD video. Like what would it entail? Like what'd you do? So basically, the way that I format my videos is they're a little bit more cinematic, but they're it's a review video basically, right? And you you film the you you take these nice cinematic shots of the like a panning shot where you go side to side or you zoom in and it looks all artistic Mm -hmm. and you overlay it on top of nice background music and some overlays and i just give my opinion about the the material right so because emacs of course they had the lt the ht and then before that they introduced like the value and the impulse ingots oh i remember yeah but then they rebranded that to the medium translucency Mm -hmm. so i was like well you know what this is actually just a rebadged product so i made sure to mention that in my review that you know this is kind of just a replacement for those ingots what i like about it is it's kind of the the best of both worlds like you you get a little bit of that translucency but you can mask things a little bit better we use a lot of mt nowadays actually and then at the end i kind of just just do my summary like a rating like nine out of ten eight out of ten whatever the product is so you make a couple review videos you post a couple different reviews online you catch the attention of a manufacturer i was lucky enough to have jason from from ivaclar who was one of the marketing directors there reach out to me and said, Hey, you know what? I, I really like what you did with the Ivoclar MT video. Uh, can I send you this product that we're, we're working on? What, what do you think about it? Uh, so of course, that, and this, that, that's the great part, right? Everybody loves getting yeah. free stuff. Right? So, so manufacturers start sending you free stuff. And that product he sent me was actually the Ivacolor kit. Uh, that's probably one of my most viewed videos. I think it has something like 40,000 views now. Holy schmoly. So yeah, it's it's it was really cool, right? It, and you keep doing that. I, I reviewed the D2000 scanner. And you, you do that in hopes of getting more free stuff and making more cool <laughs> videos. <laughs> and yeah. It's kind of self-fulfilling. Why did yeah. you start reviewing products? What was the motivation? I mean, did you go out there thinking, I want these companies to notice? Or were you just generally just kind of just want to put it out there? He's said he's a video guy remember sure you know what it's funny again uh you go to shows like chicago or any of these other trade yeah. shows and very often you see these kols and speakers and lecturers up on the stage and they'll mention a product or they'll mention something that's great and then you get to the lab you're like oh that's awesome look at those results you got and you order it and it gets into the lab and you work with it and it's not necessarily as great as they may have (laughs) (laughs) their testimony was right they might have embellished a little (laughs) that never sat right with me it it really cuts into your credibility and i didn't like people who were just simply industry mouthpieces for the sake of whoever was the highest bidder and and they're they're willing to put their reputation we get it yep so i wanted to provide a source of unbiased information uh, for for the dental lab, and that that's kind of how I founded Dental Tech Tips, which which is kind of the the brand that I mm-hmm. put all this stuff under. So Dental Tech Tips, our tagline is you know unbiased reviews, tips, tricks, and tutorials, and and all the latest and greatest in in dental technology, mm. and, and it's just a source for dental technicians to to really get an unfiltered, unbiased review of of products that I found really work based on my own personal experience and not in anybody's pocket. When you did the Iva color video, so did you actually use the stains on certain zirconias and do shading and different things like that? Of course, of course. So actually in the video, funny enough, so Iva color in their manual, they, they there's a specific section in there that says IPS Iva color is only certified for use with Xenostar and Sage Max, whatever at the time they had a, a yeah. release, right? But it's it's meant as a universal stain. So funny enough, in the video, I have this whole section about where I tested on on Katana, I tested on mm. Bruxer, and I said, you know, Ivaclaw themselves are not willing to go out there and say that it works universally on everything, but I, I actually did the tests, and it really does work on everything universally. Wow. So don't be afraid to, to go outside the box a little bit, right? So that actually opened up uh, for technicians to use Ivaclar that Ivaclar themselves wouldn't recommend. Yeah, well, I mean, they want to sell more Ivaclar. In a good way. Discs, right? Yeah. But, right. but I mean, you know how it is. In the lab, we all find the products that we like, and they 
they all oh, yeah. become these kind of Frankenstein crowns with you know yeah. this brand yeah. of zirconia, this brand of porcelain, this brand, yeah. this brand of glaze. Because that, that's how it is. We all have different preferences mm-hmm. and, and kind of our own path to making what we think is the best restoration. True to that. I agree. How many videos do you think you did before it started taking off? You know what? I've lost count just because I've made a lot of videos that have never seen the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you, you're your own worst critic, right? You, you do a video, it's not that great, and you just shovel it and set it aside or put it on the hard drive somewhere in an archive. So the the stuff that I publish, number one, is videos that I'm very proud to, to put my name behind. Sure. And number two... A lot of times people send me products. And it's not out of respect for them. I'll, I'll tell them privately, hey, you know what? This product isn't as great. Um, I, <laughs> oh, won't, I won't publish this video just because you don't want to burn any bridges, right? I'm, I, I'm not a big enough name to, to be able to just go out there and be a harsh critic because then you stop getting free stuff. <laughs> I get at the it, same man. time, I don't want to, to you know. Trash anybody. Exactly. You don't want to bash anybody, but at the same time, you, you, don't, you don't want to lose your credibility either. Right. Yeah. So, so, so a lot of the times I, I shelve a lot of those videos, but honestly, at the, the traction part, it's funny that you say that there's a lot of great creators. There's a lot of talented technicians. There's a lot of people that you never hear about. There's a lot of great content out there that really deserves a lot of eyeballs that never sees the light of day, really. But what I think to answer your question, Elvis, is it really got traction because of the people I've, I've been fortunate enough to meet throughout my career. So once again, I, I made a, a video. No, actually, it was on my blog. I made a post when Ivaclar sold their milling facility in Troy, Michigan to Core3D. Mm. And that news was not public yet. So I made this post on my website and it caught the attention of, of the general manager of Core3D at the time. So he picks up the phone and calls me. He goes, hey, are, are you dental tech tips? And I go, yeah, that, that's me. And uh, Greg Harris. Yep. Um, he, and he, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know him. Yeah. Greg says, uh, how'd you find out this information? And uh, it was on Dental Lab Network at the time. Somebody posted it up, but I, I published it on my blog. So Greg says, hey, you know what? Can I do an interview with you about this transition here? And the rest is kind of history. Greg has been an absolute great friend. He's introduced me to so many people, so many other people in the industry that, that are really, you know, the right people. So I, I do want to just say thank you to Greg. He's, he's been a, a great supporter of Dental Tech Tips in my endeavors. That's really where it kind of takes off, right? And, and very much like you guys here with, with the podcast, really focusing on the people, you know, the voices behind the bench, the people. It's not about the products. It's not about the, uh, the crowns. It's not about, you know, making videos and getting free stuff. It's about the connections that, that you really make in the industry here. Yeah, yeah that's really how I, I got my traction. So do you get sent stuff like weekly now? I wouldn't say weekly. It's it's more about like when new products come out, right? So again, you make the right friends and, and eventually you, you meet the right people and they say, hey, you know what? Would you like to try this out? So whenever a new product is is, is ready to come out, they'll, they'll send you your NDAs and your contracts and all, all, the, all the fun products. And do you send them the video before you release it? Never. So it's your video. It's your it content. Is. Exactly. It is always my content. So yeah. that it was a big, big thing for me was that it has to be unbiased. It has to be my information. Mm-hmm. I will never do a video. For example, if I'm working with Vita, let's say they will never pay me a dollar. I will mm-hmm. disclose that. Yes, they sent me this at no cost. If I want to make money off of these things, and this is kind of how it was a dilemma at the beginning, because I was like, well, how do I make money? And not not for the sake of making money, but for, for the sake of, you know, monetizing it somehow to make it compensating for your time. Exactly. I get it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what I would do is I would do sponsorships, right? So I, I would go up to another company that may be related. So if I'm doing a milling machine video, I did one uh, for the IMS uh, 350i. I went up to a cam manufacturer, so Hyperdent, Jordan at Hyperdent. And I said, hey, Jordan, did you want to sponsor this video? This is kind of the cost of what it takes to make the video. He said, sure, let me let me cut you a check. That's in our budget. Wow. So that way it helps to, and very much like you guys, right? You guys have sponsors yeah. for the podcast. You still maintain your integrity. You have that sponsored plug. I say, hey, you know what? This portion of the video is sponsored by Hyperdent, for example. Mm-hmm. And you, you read off their message there. But of, of course, it, it maintains the integrity of everything else. Yeah. Agree. No, yeah, totally. That's fantastic. How many times have you been hit back by the company because they're unhappy with the review? You know what? Most companies are very receptive, to be honest. Mm-hmm. They're, they're very receptive. And that's just really how you have to be because we're, we're such a small community in the, lab, sure. in the lab industry here, right? There's like thousands, like a handful of us. So there's luckily, again, I've, I've, I've really 
built a voice for myself and, and a platform and a brand. So you work closely with these companies, you tell them the honest feedback, and a lot of companies appreciate this feedback because it lets them be competitive. It, it allows them to to make better products and compete with with all their competitors, right? So it, uh, I've been very fortunate enough to work with companies that that are receptive to this. And it, you know what? If they don't like what I say, I just never end up hearing back from them. <laughs> so there's never really much of a like a pushback. It's more like they just kind of cut off communication altogether, and that's about it, right? Yeah, but like you said, also like if it's a negative review, you know, you shelve it. Like you don't want to be that person either. Exactly. Exactly. Which I think that's reciprocal. So it's like, yeah, I'm not going to do this because this isn't great. And then you shelve it and they get better. Either way, they get better. Absolutely. Yeah. So companies that are receptive to user feedback, kudos to you. But but Mm -hmm. keep doing what you're doing because it just makes your product greater. Well, they all should be since we're the user. I mean, come on. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. (laughs) Can you think of an instance, and you don't have to like go into detail, but where you gave a review and it was enough for that company to change the product for the better? So funny enough, I work quite a bit with 3Shape. I've been working with 3Shape for you know 16 yep. years now. I was going to bring it up. Yep. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I'm very critical of 3Shape. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of 3Shape, but I'm very critical of 3Shape, right? Because I feel like if, if you push a company hard enough and you care enough, then you'll only, you're only pushing them to get better. So, I mean, I, I get a lot of pushback from, from the developer specifically because, like, I'm, I mean... They see my comments online. They they see the the criticisms and everything. So I'll, I'll get I'll get some flack from the the guys that actually program this stuff out of Ukraine. And but at the same time, they understand where I'm coming from. I think I think I, because of the fact that I keep coming back, and I still am a user of this. I haven't switched away from from Three Shape as a platform. Hmm. I think they appreciate the feedback at, at the end of the day. So you'll make a comment like on Facebook, and then the programmers of Three Shape will contact <laughs> yeah, okay. you and be like. What really? the hell? <laughs> yeah. yeah, funny enough, actually, I made a comment on uh, on the beta group today, and Raphael, he's he's one of the the, the programmers uh, in, in Ukraine for Three Shape, and and he he actually has a habit of calling me out on it and say, hey, you know what the what you said there was a little bit out of line, you know, it was, it was a little bit disrespectful. <laughs> so, oh, jeez. <laughs> but you know what? At the end of the day, we, there, there's a mutual respect there. And it's sure. Like, we're all working to make the, the product better. How many videos do you try to do? Like, do you do one a month? Or, I mean, how often do you... Uh, Elvis says you're out there all the time. So how often are you releasing one? So I I made the the terrible mistake of promising to release one video a week when I first started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very much That's like cool. somebody I know that has one episode of a podcast a week <laughs> you know what dental lab work gets in the way all my other kind of commitments that have, have come along with this have life kind of in the way. <laughs> but life gets in the way you know family pesky family and work-life yeah. balance and all that stuff yeah. i do try to put out a video you know once every few months right okay. that sounds more realistic and it's for the creative integrity what, what i've realized is as a platform it's People don't really care about the video. They care more about the interaction. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've kind of pivoted the, the model of dental tech tips more towards like a more comprehensive, right? So there, there's more articles, there's more online interaction, social media, memes, Elvis, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, things like that, right? So, so a, lot, a lot more interaction on social media, resharing things, putting little tips and tricks and, and posts because we don't all have time to sit down and watch a video from a guy about Bunsen burners or whatever. <laughs> People don't really care that much about it, right? For me, it was more of like a passion project because I love making videos. But to pivot the platform more as, as a way that, that to deliver content in the way that, that people are there, right? So if you're on Instagram, you'll see more photos. You'll see more reels lately mm-hmm. or stories. On Facebook, I spend a lot of time writing comments. You know, the, that that's really where the, the gold is on Facebook. Right? Yeah, so it, you, you got to kind of cater to the platform and cater to, to what, what people want to see. Did you start the Three Shape group on Facebook? We've had so many people on this podcast. <laughs> I, I did not. I did not. Mention you and a Three Shape group being the biggest help for their growth in digital design. So I, I did not start this. The group was started. Wow, his name absolutely slips my mind out right now. He's not he's not part of the group anymore. But Michael Frazier out, out of Florida, actually, mm-hmm. he is the administrator. He's he's kind of the he was the one that really kind of built the group up. And then of course Mark Dixon and Savon, yeah, are, they're also moderators on that group. So funny enough, like dental social media, I was absolutely unaware that it existed at all. 
even when I started dental tech tips, the only exposure to any online dental interaction was Dental Lab Network, which is like a forum, right? Yeah. And I posted on there very sporadically. I'd, I'd lurk on there and maybe put a comment every every once in a while. But beyond that, I didn't know that there was this massive community of passionate dental technicians. And funny enough, a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, he came to the lab and his name was Mark Chan, denturist up in Canada here. Mm -hmm. And we added each other as friends. And then I saw that he was part of these dental groups on his Facebook profile. And I was like, what, what's that about? Yeah. So now I, I saw all the groups that he was a part of. And then I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to join those same groups. So I started joining groups and I found groups that I was passionate about. So, of course, like, you know, dental, CAD, CAM and all these different things. And I didn't know about the, the three shape group specifically until probably closer to like 2017, 18. Really? Wow. So, yeah, it was, it was quite a while. I got on there and started joining all these different groups. If you look at my phone nowadays, I'm, I think I'm part of like a thousand Facebook groups. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a problem. Yeah, I get it. Um, but uh, funny enough, like the, the group now, the Three Shape Study Group, has like over 35,000 members. It's so huge, at the beginning yeah. of COVID, 2020, March 2020, the three guys, Michael, Mark, and Savan, they approached me and they said, hey, you know what? The group is getting really, really, really busy. You post a lot on that group. Um, you spend a lot of time on Facebook, basically, is what they're saying. <laughs> you have a problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to help us moderate the group? And I said, oh, guys, I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. So I, I became a moderator on there. But, I mean, for years, like from up until 2020, I was posting regularly on there, you know, adding content, helping out whoever had an issue, right? Because exactly like I was, I've been using Three Shapes since 2006, and we didn't have any help. You know, back then it was Germany was your only line yeah. of support. So if something broke down and it was five o'clock at night, you didn't have anybody to call until, you know, like seven o'clock in the morning the next day. So you yeah. had to run into the lab early and then get on support. So I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. Thankfully, I was, again, very computer savvy. I like to think that I'm pretty good with a mouse and keyboard. So I did manage to make a lot of mistakes, but also fix those mistakes. You don't want anyone to feel dead in the water. So very immediately, somebody posts something up and you, you post a response because you know how how to fix the problem. So, yeah, that's really how that group is. Like, And everybody on there, like, the, it, there's no desire to promote anything. There's no ulterior motives in the group. It's just people wanting to help other users. And the mods, like they, and not me, I didn't set the culture. I didn't set anything like that. They've always been like that, right? It's just, it's just a culture of, of wanting to help each other, wanting to build each other up sharing with each other my dad a dental technician for 35 years very old school during what i like to call the golden age of dental technology yeah. your greatest tools were were the ones that you kept secret to yourself <laughs> so my dad taught me some tricks at the bench doing metal work to this day if i revealed them he would murder me in my sleep so uh, <laughs> i don't subscribe to that i i feel like the more we share with each other the more we lift each other up it, it makes us all better as an industry that entire group of thirty five thousand members we all kind of subscribe to that and everybody really helps each other out as, as much as we can it's a great group and so many guests have mentioned and I can't imagine how many other people you've helped that haven't been on the podcast kind of grow and get comfortable with three shape. Oh, absolutely. And it's, I owe a lot of my growth in three shape to that. And it, it's funny because uh, you hear a lot of articles and studies where like somebody may be pretty good at something, but if they're working alone, they only yeah. progress so much. Right. But where if you're, you're among a group of your peers and they're, they're excellent, it, it makes you so much better in a much shorter time. So in the past, since 2017, when I joined the group, my growth and my understanding of 3Shape, you'll see something from a new user, right? I've been using it for years and years and years, but you can't have an ego about it because somebody can come in out of nowhere and just bring up this new trick and everyone goes, wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we, we all benefit from it and, and we all kind of build off of that, right? So it's very collaborative. It's, it's such a great environment to be in. How do you find time to do all of that? Facebook and the videos and a full-time job. Like, are you up all night long? <laughs> I work a lot, quite a bit. The nice thing, is, of course, is you're on a computer anyway. So while designing on 3Shape, I mean, to this day, I spend a good solid eight hours out of every day designing cases on 3Shape. Wow. So, of course, you have a Facebook window open on one of your monitors. You have your messenger window. You have <laughs> yeah. uh, Instagram on your phone on the, on the little <laughs> charging stand there. And I'm scrolling through that as well. So, like, I mean, I'm, I'm 
not very good at multitasking, but that, that's kind of how you do that. You get notifications and everything as well. And then kind of my extracurricular stuff with dental tech tips, um, the lecturing and all that stuff. That happens after I put my kids to bed, right? So from you know eight o'clock until midnight, one a.m. Sometimes yeah. that's where the, the the passion projects get finished. So yeah. So you're a late owl. I always have been. Yeah. And, and now it's it's just a matter of you know taking advantage of, of all the opportunities I've been been presented with and just being being grateful for, for for the opportunities. Did you have to turn off that part of your phone that tells you how long you spent on social media for the day? <laughs> <laughs> I had to on mine. It was depressing. I just ignore it. The, the, the weekly report. <laughs> yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty consistent though. They're like you spent five percent more, six percent less this week. Or yeah, <laughs> I'm consistently on social media quite a bit. So let's go back to the bench. So what kind of cases are you designing in the lab? What, what kind of work are you guys doing? I've really kind of luckily put myself into a niche of, of doing more complex full digital workflows. Yeah. The majority of my day is spent doing digital smile designs and 3D diagnostics, believe it or not. Wow, really? So you know how it is, Barbara. Back in the day, you're, you're there trying to wax up a case 20 minutes before the patient's in the chair because it was a wax up right in your feet. <laughs> and the <Yeah>. dentist, <laughs> you, you forgot about it because you had more important things to do. Mm. But now I'm a huge proponent of involving the lab technician early, very early in the, the treatment planning phase. So now what I do, and I'm very fortunate that I have, I've built some very good relationship with clients and prosthodontists and, and uh, some, some very great dentists who are trust me with working with their cases early on. So we're very collaborative in the way that we treatment plan, right? They'll f- take a picture with their phone, fire it off to me and say, hey, what do you think of this case? Mm-hmm. So it, it's very nice to see like as a lab technician that we're being taken more seriously with the advent of digital. It's nice because you're able to get jump on that, that bus very early mm-hmm. and really kind of dissect the case, right? I'm, I'm working on some cases right now where, we, you know, you need to open the VDO, maybe you need to consider some implants. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're going to do a little bit of clear aligner to move some teeth to get them into the proper space to give us proper prosthetic space. Yep. So I can visualize that stuff during that diagnostic phase, looking at the casts, opening them up, playing with a little bit. If you're doing the stuff at the bench, you're lucky if you're waxing up one set of mediocre looking you know, wax up teeth where I can move these teeth around. I can place them whichever way I want to. I can make three different copies and make three different iterations and really say, you know what, treatment plan A for this patient is we're going to do some clear aligners on the lower anteriors, crank them back so we get enough space so we can address that erosion on the linguals. Maybe this one we're going to, option two is we're going to do full arch lower with some composite buildups or we're going to do like a snap on smile to open it up. So you get to play with all these different options. You present the patient with all these different options. Number one, it makes the the doctor look great because then they're presenting the patient with, you know, budget option, middle option, high end option. Ooh. And of course, it, it builds the trust and the relationship between you, you and the clinician as well. And and you get these these excellent results and cases that you're able to present and put up on social media for great fake internet points. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, how do you do a diagnostic if the doctor sends you in a scan? So he sends you in a lower scan, upper scan, and a bite. Yep. What do you do? We back it up quite a bit from there. So the, the first thing is the doctor does their clinical assessment of the, the patient's chief complaint, right? Mm-hmm. So they tell me this is what they want to address. So we do a 2D smile design first to present to the patient to because usually they're dipping their feet in the water, right? And mm-hmm. if you're if you're committing a lot of time, I mean, we charge twenty bucks for a wax up per unit. Same here. I mean, it's it's not it's not very expensive, but I mean, you do a full mouth, upper and lower, it's you know five six hundred bucks. It's a lot of time for a case. You know what I mean? I mean, like technically, what do you yep. do? Do you print the model? Do how do you make a digital wax up? Is I guess my question. Well, it, it depends on the client. So the, there's a couple ways that I go about it. If they're a long distance client, they have a printer in their office. I mm-hmm. will do the digital diagnostic in three shape. Mm-hmm. I'll append everything together and I'll send them completed models that they can print in their office. Right. I work with clients oh, wow. on the on the, the West Coast there in BC. I work with clients, you know, all over the world. And yeah, you're able to do that. That's that's one of the great things about digital. If it's a local client, they're a little bit more used to the traditional workflow. I'll print the models here with our printers. We'll make silicone matrices, reduction guides, whatever, and we'll send that to them. And then they can do an intro or mock-up that way. So it, it just okay. really depends on what their preference is for, for how they want to want to do that second console. Fantastic. Okay. Do you have a video on that? Of course. Of course. I have lots of videos. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, Barb, come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to check that out. Of course. I'll share it with you after the fact. Awesome. We're still doing them traditional, well, analog, um, still waxing, and I want to move into the digital. And 
we're just struggling a little bit with that. I'm a huge proponent of doing as many things digitally, digitally. as you possibly can. Yep. Number one, because I'm I like to think I'm a mediocre technician at best and, and doing things with my hands. I mean, I, I've been working with a mouse and keyboard for, you know, nearly two decades now. I've picked up a wax drum pretty decent with a hand piece, but my primary weapons that I use are, are the mouse and keyboard. Yep. That's my preference, right? But like an old school technician that, that's great with, with a brush, that's their weapon of choice. So it, it just really depends on what your competency is and, and where you really want to lean into. Nice. Do you use a regular mouse or do you use one of those fancy, weird mouses <laughs> that I see that some designers are really into? I don't even know what they're called, but you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, so that that's the 3D connection space mouse. I do not like it. I use a traditional three button mouse. Good for you, um, man. And that and that's about it. And and I splurged last year um and I, I bought myself an ergonomic mouse that actually fits my hand. <laughs> it took me probably a good three months to to retrain the muscles in my hand to re- forget what the Dell mouse that shipped yeah. with the three computer and to really learn that that Logitech one. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's much more comfortable. My hand is thanking me for that. <laughs> and some of these mice, mouses, I don't know, but some of these things are just crazy looking. I, I don't get them, but yeah, yeah. It's more ergonomic. People like hotkeys. My yeah. progression in three shape is a little bit different from everybody else's because I learned the software when it was literally three buttons and the only thing you could make was a coping mm. and i've been fortunate enough to see like the the progression of the software where they've added one feature to the next so i'm still designing in it very much like i, I did in the beginning with with some additional tools here and there where somebody else jumping in you know five years ago with a full tool set and different hotkeys and different things they'll approach it from a, a different mindset too right we all have our our different ways that we like to set things up Mm -hmm. yeah we mentioned before we started recording you're speaking at lab day west i am now i I think this is going to come out after lab day west but how'd you get into speaking when did you approach that (laughs) so funny enough it's almost like a a fake it till you make it (laughs) type thing right i hear you so (laughs) funny enough greg again i'll I'll mention him again he goes hey you know what (laughs) you're pretty good with three shape right yeah yeah uh you want to teach a course Sure, why not? I know everything. So so I, I had no clue what I was going to teach, but he, he needed me to, to put together a course. So he, he bet on me. And, and, and thankfully, I, I managed to put something together that, that was somewhat credible. And then uh, people, I guess, liked it. When was this? This was 2000. 16 okay so you're not new to speaking then no I'm, I'm not new to speaking it's just i've done a lot of of not prominent ones right you do these these little ones and for nobody's and, and, and nothings and like there's like three people in the room and <laughs> Got a few of those. yep <laughs> but but that that's how you you cut your teeth in, in speaking right yeah um and you lean really heavily on the powerpoint and you're, you're very literal whatever's on the slide there you repeat it verbatim they could have just read the powerpoint and not yes. listen to your obnoxious <laughs> voice but yeah i i went through that and i i really again one referral to the next hey this guy knows things about three shape hey he knows things about 3d printing hey he knows things about whatever subject right i like to think of myself as kind of a, a jack of all trades of, of dental technology i'm not particularly good at one thing i'd, I'd say I'm, i'd lean more heavily into digital but i've been fortunate enough that enough people take enough chances on me to to allow me to teach a whole wide range of subjects i've taught digital dentures i've taught implant planning courses that's really like hands-on courses is where i I really cut my teeth with speaking yeah and that was where you know uh, people said hey would you like to come to this event and another guy here in canada mike parsons from abutment directs he's their their distributor here in canada for medentica parts he really took a, a shot on me at me and said hey you know what let's do some webinars and this is way way before covid this was like four years before covid we were wow. using zoom as a platform for teaching three hour courses for three shape and masiga and all these printing things so that's that's how i kind of got my speaking feet wet there we we have our own trade shows up here in canada that nobody's probably ever heard of technorama is a big one we have some of the, the smaller ones here so I, I did some speaking gigs at those prior to COVID. And actually, 2020 would have been my my coming out year, funny yeah. enough, yeah. <laughs> where I had a, a whole bunch of speaking gigs lined up. And I was so absolutely bummed because it was like March 
15th, I think, or 16th of 2020 was when they were announced. They were shutting everything down. And then April, whatever, was like Technorama, which is like the Chicago of, of, of Canada, Canada, basically, wow. right? Yeah. So that was my, my big shot at something, and I never got a chance. They was like, oh, well, we'll postpone it to October. And then yeah, back it was in those days. Ultimately, <laughs> indefinitely yeah. canceled. And funny yeah. enough, actually, a couple of weeks ago was the first Technorama back, 2022. And that's where I, I finally got my, my second chance at speaking at Technorama. So I, that was that was very nice. And how'd you do? Did you pack the room? Uh, uh, the room was actually standing room only. The nice. funny thing is, <laughs> the funny thing is, COVID. Uh, and I hate to say it, it's kind of a silver lining. It's it's terrible. It, it's terrible, you know. All yeah, the, yeah. But it it was a very great thing for my career because I was already digital. I was already online. I was already doing Zoom for you know four years. Funny enough, I met a prosthodontist, Dr. Effie Habsha. She runs an organization called Women in Dentistry. She wanted to put webinars on, and she was friends with Mike. So he said, hey, you know what? Reach out to Min. He knows how to organize Zooms very well. And we've worked very closely together, and I actually picked up an excellent prosthodontist as, as a client now as a result. And, and she's just been an absolute pleasure to work with as well. So I shout out to her. Do you speak for them, or do you run the, the group? For the women in dentistry. Women in dentistry, funny enough, I am their IT guy. I do all the the Zoom stuff in the background for that. She also introduced me to the American Prosthodontic Society, another absolutely wonderful group of prosthodontists there. I've ran the IT for the all the Zoom monthly meetings for the past two years, and we're, we're going strong, right? It's it's one of the most, Barb, you know how it is. You, you sit on a whole bunch of, of different oh, yeah. and trying to arrange Zooms. But again, it always comes down to the people and how much dedication they're willing to put into that sure. organization. Yeah. So we've been very fortunate that the leadership and the teams and, and all of these organizations have, have really leaned heavily into to webinars. And we've been very consistent, you know, like we've had hundreds, sometimes thousands of people show up to the, these because, oh, wow. yeah, because number one, they, they have great speakers, right? They have great content and people were hungry for it in the beginning, but I think that consistency has really paid off as well yeah fantastic and then what are you speaking about at lab day west is it just three shape is that your go-to so i'll be speaking for argon so they oh, will be go. yeah so i'll be speaking about complex fully digital workflows copying and pasting basically so barb that's actually the, yeah. the the whole concept of taking that digital diagnostic wax up that 2d digital smile design and copying and pasting that initial design into your subsequent steps right so for the provisional for that final you're just copying and pasting and saving yourself so much time. The second subject I'll be speaking about for Argon as well is navigating the digital highway. Wow. 3D printing, manufacturing, milling, all the different technologies. And That's not a big subject. No, it's not a big <laughs> subject at all. Yeah. Again, I've been very fortunate enough to work with milling for a very long time. I've been very fortunate enough to make friends with some very great 3D printing companies and really grow up with that technology. It's funny enough because I'm very heavy on 3 shape and milling, but people really see me as the 3D printing guy. Hmm. even though it's it's probably one of my my least amount of ex areas of expertise but i guess not very many people have much expertise in 3d printing at all so it's true <laughs> so yeah. um yeah i'll be speaking about 3d printing additive reductive manufacturing technologies how to integrate all that stuff together right because you may have a roll-in mill maybe you have an amon gerbach mill maybe you have an asiga printer maybe you have you know a desktop health or an accurate or whatever it may be or whatever software. How do you integrate all these things? How do you navigate all these different pathways and channels? That'll be that that talk there. That's a great topic. Wow. And then I'll also be speaking for Asiga, and we'll just be doing a deep dive, two-hour hands-on demo of their Composer software, some of the new software features, multi-material printing, uh, how to nest, how to do some advanced tips, tricks, and, and features. So yeah, that, that'll be fun. Uh, the, the whole thing's only two days. It's I only mean, two days. <laughs> yeah, you're fitting all this in. That's a lot going on. Yeah, of course. Well, you know what? Uh, it's funny because in Chicago, I think I did five lectures. Did you Chicago. really? Yeah, yeah. So I, I we did the, we introduced the hard soft for Keystone. I did one for a Sega. I did three for uh, three shape as well. So yeah, it was it was a fun. It was a it was a fun time. That's fantastic. I don't understand how you do that. I mean, I'm speaking, but it's usually just once at one event. I don't understand how you keep them all straight. A lot of passion, a lot of gratitude, uh, a lot of preparation. Uh, I'm lucky enough, like I said, I've, I've been speaking for a long time and I've built up a catalog of content. Sure. So again, it's it's not really reading things off of PowerPoint anymore. It's just I'm lucky enough that I, I know the content like the back of my hand. Yeah. So back in the day, I definitely didn't. <laughs> but it's it's again, you you fake it till you make it, right? You, yeah. You, you speak about yeah. what you know about 
you don't need to pretend anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well said. I agree. Are you the type that puts that PowerPoint together the night before? Um, so I will work on it like months before thinking that I'm getting you know, ahead a, a jump on it <laughs> and then I'll forget about it or, you know, lab work will get in the way um, and, and different things, life or little projects. And then a week before I'll panic. And then I'll work really hard on it. <laughs> I'll get really, really mad at it because I, it wasn't the way that I wanted it to be. And then on the airplane ride to go. the convention or whatever, I'm working on the plane in the airport the night before and even like five minutes before the presentation, I'll be changing slides. So yeah. so it's... it's Sounds like it, that's pretty normal. Yeah. yeah that's, that's how we all do it, right? <laughs> yeah. That's great. So, man, how can people find you? What is the best way to track you down? to f get into all this content they can like share subscribe find me in all the usual places at dental tech tips twitter instagram facebook linkedin you name it uh the website yep. is dentaltechtips.com if you want to send me an email dentaltechtips at gmail.com and that's all the usual places you can find me at nice awesome. and what's coming up what's next for dental tech tips hopefully more videos hopefully more collaborations more lectures like i said i'm just very grateful that people keep liking to hear what i'm saying i guess so. <laughs> we know the feeling <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll continue to keep doing what i'm doing and, and hopefully people keep listening and the moment they stop listening or i stop getting views then I, I guess that's time to change i get it i'm going to check it out just saying well thank you i think it's great man yeah i had no idea that awesome. honestly I've always known about you, but I didn't know you're actually in a lab doing it every day for eight hours a day. I think that adds a lot of credibility. Heck yeah. Well, thank you. Certainly. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for the invitation. I'm going to get back to the bench now. And, Same and here. Some cases. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everybody get back to work, and men, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Sounds good. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks. You too. Hi. This message is for the many dentists and dental staff that are listening to Voices from the Bench every week. The fastest growing product that we have at Growth3x are our Growth3x aligners. Growth3x aligners are only available from Growth3x aligner certified labs. Why? Because we believe in the synergies that are being created between you, the dental office, and your lab. And we want to further leverage these synergies. Our aligners are, for instance, used as a pretreatment to larger restorative aesthetic cases, they're used to widen gaps prior to placing implants. They're used to close the diastema, ease crowding, and simply enhance your patient's smiles. Even for your Essex retainer needs, your Growth3x Aligner Certified Lab can help. Look for a Growth3x Aligner Certified Lab near you, such as Castle Dental Lab in San Antonio, Texas, ask for Blaine, AMK Dental Lab in O'Neill, Nebraska, ask for Anne, Stax Dental Lab in McCool, Maryland, Ask for Derek, AA Dental Design in Marietta, California, Ask for Frankie, and many, many more. For a complete listing of Growth3x Aligner certified labs, go to www.growth3x.com. Thank you, Growth3x, and we appreciate your support of the podcast. A big, huge thanks to men for taking the time out of your busy day to talk with us. So, guys, I'm sure if you were on Facebook and any dental laboratory group, you've probably seen Men as he is very active helping his fellow technicians, which, by the way, I did see a Facebook about you two. Sounds like there's some competition going on. <laughs> Just saying. But make sure you go to dentaltechtips.com for some great unbiased product reviews and just some really great tips that Men has picked up over the years. Thank you so much for giving back to the industry, Men. And remember, next week is June, so you must send us your audio thanks, and we will play them all month. Just record yourself on your phone or computer and email it to info at voicesfromthebench.com. Give some love for your mentors or anybody out there that's special to you in our industry. So, super important. Absolutely. All right, everybody. We hope to see you at FDLA. And if not, we'll definitely talk to you next week. Have a good one. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. I saw the Facebook. What's up with you two?